The short chain is a weapon that its usability depends on distance. Meaning there is a perfect distance to apply short chain. And it's the length of the chain. So if the opponent is too far away, if he doesn't have a projectile, he will not endanger me. But what happens if he's too close? The basic stuff is holding the weights at the end of the chain like this. So the pinky, the little finger, holds, okay? And the rest of the fingers join. This strengthens my fist and is a base of using the chain when I open distance. And from here, I can punch. So that uh, dictates the length of the chain. Because if the chain is too close, then I won't be able to punch. So there is a perfect length for this chain. So the opponent gets near and I punch. Of course I can punch. And now for the first technique. Punch to the chin or to the thorax. Leave the hand there. Take the other hand. Go behind the neck. Return for Kubinage or Tayotoshi. So the leg is like this. If the opponent abruptly closed distance and is now even closer than a hand's reach, meaning he is clinching me in that distance, the first thing I want to do is improve my stance like this. Just like I'm doing standing up with no chain and nothing. So this is the first thing. He grabs me. Second thing is, after I improve my base a little bit, I take the chain. Look at the precise way of doing it. Because grabbing a chain like this, okay, it might fly into my face. So I'm grabbing it close. And we'll see it used in more and more techniques as we advanced. This is it. Now I take the chain and loop it on the front of the neck. Again, stance one. Grab the chain like this. Loop it on the front. Now, choke, and this is a blood choke. And wait, four seconds, he faints. So this is the first thing. Again, one, two, three, Four, loop, chop. Now the next one. Opponent clinches me. I'm doing the same thing. First of all, improve your stance. Then, grab the chain like this. And not like this. Grab it like this. Loop the chain. And now, Push the opponent's chin. What you have here is omote gyaku on the neck. And after you fixed it, you can either break the opponent's neck, okay? Or if you want to control, hold and do also togaki.
Next one up, his opponent grabbing me with two hands. Now I can do many things, but let's see an intermediate technique. That's not a basic one, an arm lock. For this arm lock, first of all, I have to punch. So this is what I do. Usually, in most of the techniques involving arm locks and chain, in most of them, I have to punch first. Or else I will not get the minute, okay, the, the split second of the opponent standing like this and allowing me to do the arm lock, okay? With a throw, I don't have to punch because I don't need that split second of complete pause. But I have to if I want to do an arm lock. So, one, two. And now look at this. I've got the chain looped here and I'm applying pressure with both hands and the chain on one wrist only. So only one wrist will be affected and the other one will follow through. So this is it. Punch, thread two, going to reverse Bosha Dori, okay? You can use this to dislocate, or if you want to control, leave the chain and use his balance. Opponents holding me with two hands. Okay, again, an intermediate technique is less hitting. I can just punch, okay, and move to an arm lock. Less hitting, more control. One, two. That, usually that's enough, again. Now look how I grab the chain. I don't do this, even though one can if one practices enough. Don't do this. Put it over the hands and start from here. This way you will always have the chain, okay? Because this might be a high adrenaline situation and your motor control is deteriorating in high adrenaline situation. So, one, two. And now the punch, okay? So I'll do it on the chest area, okay? It goes either here or to break the nose. Either here or break the nose. And now loop and break his sternum. And throw him to the floor.